Hey guys, you're watching Cutie Crafts. Today's video has been long overdue. I made and designed this DIY cinema box back in August after watching Crazy Rich Asians twice in theaters. And now it's already midterm season of my second semester and I somehow found time to finally edit this video and show you guys how to make this. It might look a bit complicated and difficult to make at a first glance, but trust me, it's pretty simple and the only hard part was designing it. So all you need to do now is follow my instructions and you can have have this as home decor for yourself. Hope you guys enjoy the video and let's get started. I'm gonna start with the biggest piece of this entire project. This is the back of the light box and essentially you're gonna to wanna to make a rectangle with dimensions 31 by 27 beads and making sure that you leave the spaces exactly as shown. I wanted to go with a simpler design, so I filled this whole thing up with toothpaste blue beads, but you can customize it to whatever design you think looks cool, make it a rainbow, you could even put a scene in there with different sprites, but this is how my piece will look at the end. Pause the video here so you can copy down the template. For the front, I copied the same template down but used clear and white beads. It's essential that you use clear beads because these are the only ones that will let light through very nicely. Then I got some painter's tape or you can use masking tape to stick all of the beads together and this will just make it easier for the ironing process and reduce the risk of making a mistake. I wanted the front to have a nice shiny finish, so I'm using ironing film and I have my iron set at setting number 3, which is the polyester setting. And as usual, once I'm done one side, I'm going to flip this over, take the tape off carefully, making sure all the beads have fused together on that side. This tape is still a bit sticky, so I'm going to reuse it for the back piece and some other pieces as well. After ironing the other side and making sure all the beads are fused together, I'm going to let this sit a little bit underneath a heavy book so that it'll stay flat. So this is what the front piece looks like after ironing. It's exactly the same as the back piece, just a different color. And you'll see the back piece later once I assemble. But for now, let's use this and make the side pieces. I used the front piece as a reference so I knew exactly where to place my beads so that they would fit together with the front piece like a puzzle. I also made sure it was wide enough to fit the battery box to my LED lights because this will be hiding inside of the light box. With the vertical side piece done, I did the same thing but for the horizontal one and same idea, you just place the beads around the areas where they will fit in together like a puzzle piece and I was actually designing these templates as I was filming this so I had to make sure that everything was correct on the very first try. I made a second horizontal side piece and the color is different just because I didn't have enough toothpaste and it will be at the bottom of the light box anyway. And for the second vertical side piece, I left a space in there because I wanted to put the switch through there, but I found a better design afterwards, so don't copy this just yet. I was following it for this LED, but I ended up not using it, so the battery box is slightly bigger and the LEDs work much better. So you can copy the templates here, but you might have to adjust the hole depending on what kind of LED you're using. Now for my favorite part, it's assembly time. This is really simple. You just have to connect the right pieces together and they will snap in just like a puzzle. Now you've got this nice little box and I will be opening it up again to install the lights but first we'll have to make the compartments at the front that will hold all of the letters. 
This will probably take the most time for you to finish because these strips are made using mini beads. I've got two 54 by 4 strips, four 54 by 3 strips, and two 54 by 1 strips, which are just one single line of mini beads. Mini beads are always so tricky to work with and they can move so easily, so I'm bringing out some scotch tape so that I can take it off very easily, and then we'll iron them at setting number one. Now I've got eight of these long strips, and again, you can customize them to whatever color you'd like. These four strips will make two different types of borders, so make sure you watch carefully where I glue these. This bottom border will have one line of beads exposed at the top, and the middle border, you have to put this one line of beads right in the middle of the 3x54 piece. I found that nail glue is a pretty good adhesive for these beads and since they have a brush on it, it doesn't make everything so messy and you can precisely put the glue where you want it. Once everything is dry, make sure you can differentiate between the top and the bottom borders. This is what the side of the strip should look like when you glue it to the bottom, and this is what it should look like when you glue it to the top. When you glue the middle strips, the single line of beads is what you'll be gluing onto the box. Keeping the orientation of these strips in mind, we can now place them onto the front side of the light box. I also use the nail glue to glue these pieces in place, but if you have any better super glues, then I would recommend using that instead. Once that's done, this is what the borders look like from a side view. You can see now that there are some slots where you can slide in letters, and I will show you how to make that. Before you throw away any of your product packaging, double check to see if there's any plastic material like this. These can be easily cut into strips so that we can make our letters. Each letter will require a 1.7 by 3.5 plastic rectangle. Once you've got one rectangle cut out, you can use this as a guide to cut out your other rectangles. Depending on what you want to write on your light box, you may need a lot of these rectangles, so you might want to ask somebody to help you out. I printed some 85 font Andale mono letters using my X-Acto knife. Try to cut it exactly at the edge of the letters so that you don't see any white spots. To make sure all of these letters will be aligned, you'll have to put in the plastic rectangles into the slots first. You may have to adjust and trim the height depending on how you glued the borders. I glued on one letter first, and then I used my clear glue to glue on the other letters, making sure that everything is aligned before drying. If you use regular glue for this step, you might have some residues left behind that will make the letters look not so great, so I definitely recommend getting some clear glue for this step. So once you've figured out the alignment for these letters, you can make as many of them as you would like, and I have a whole selection of the entire alphabet so that I can write whatever I want. I even got some symbols. Like I said earlier, I switched up to this kind of LED strip that I found at the dollar store, and what I did was wrap this around the inside of the cinema box. But before that, I needed to make the opening for the switch a little bit bigger, so I cut out the beads. And now the battery box and switch fits tightly on the side of the light box. The good thing about this kind of LED light is that it has an adhesive backing. So all I had to do was peel off the paper and I could stick it all around the inside walls of the light box. So that's the inside of the cinema box and this kind of light strip works a lot better because it allows the light to shine pretty evenly throughout the entire box. Once everything is secure, we just close up the back. Just like that, the cinema box is complete, and I just have to spell some words out. And that, my friends, is how you make your own DIY cinema light box.
making it all the way to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed watching me make this DIY cinema light box. If you recreate it, please tag me at Cutie Crafts on Instagram or Twitter. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can be updated with my latest craft videos. And also hit that notification bell because I heard it works. So that's all for me today. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys next time with another Cutie Craft. Bye!